Ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're going to start. Um, I want to first of all thank each and every one of you for being here today. This is really a historic day. Um, and before we get into, uh, into the, the, the crust of what we're talking about and our dear friend and wonderful Congressman Stephen Lynch being here today, I want to recognize um, some of the elected officials and some really dedicated private partners that are here today. If I could, I want to, uh, of course, welcome and thank uh, Senator Michael Brady. Thank you, Senator, for being here. I want to thank uh, Rep. Jerry Cassidy, Representative, thank you. Rep. Michelle Dubois is here, thank you very much. Rep. Uh, leader Claire Cronin, unfortunately, is tied up with the conflicting, but again, uh, the leader uh, wanted to just send her best. I want to uh, welcome and thank the Dean of the City Council, Ward 3 Councilor, Dennis Ianieri is here, thank you, Councilor. I want to thank um, the Ward 4 City Council, Susan DeCastro, for being here. Thank you very much, Councilor. I want to thank Nolan on behalf of uh, Senator Ed Markey for being here. Thank you, Senator. Senator's representative. I'd like to uh, thank some really dedicated uh, individuals here in the city of Brockton that save lives every single day. Sue Joss, the CEO of Brockton Neighborhood Health Center, and Dr. Maria Celli from Neighborhood Health Center as well. Kim Holland, who is the CEO of Signature Brockton Hospital. I want to uh, also recognize John Yuzinski, Father Bill's Mainspring. John, thank you. Mary Waldron from uh, OCPC. Mary, thank you for being here as well. Um, today is a milestone, and we would not be where we are right now uh, without the dedication of our esteemed and wonderful Congressman Stephen Lynch and the federal delegation. But before we hear from the Congressman, I'd like to take a moment of silence. We lost a true champion, a forever boxer. Marvelous Marvin Hagler passed this week and at the age of 66. I'd like to remember the champ. I'd also like to take a moment to remember the 410 lives here in the city that we have uh, lost because of COVID-19. May they rest in peace and our thoughts and prayers to their loving family members. And so today is, is a historic day. As you know, the city of Brockton has been ravaged by COVID. It really has. As I said, 410 loss of life, over 12,000 cases here in the city of Brockton. And without the dedication of our elected officials, local, state, and of course federal, we would be in a dire straits even worse than we are right now. But recovery is, is beckoning. We can see it on the beacon right now. And today is a day, from a financial standpoint, $35 million, exceeding $35 million, because of the efforts of Congressman Stephen Lynch, the federal delegation. Now is the time to rebuild the City of Champions, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and the country as a whole. So it's my honor and privilege to welcome, as I always do, an honorary Brocktonian, the great Congressman Stephen F. Lynch. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I, I really do appreciate it. And, and uh, since my early days in representing the city of Brockton, I've become pretty close friends with the Veteran Boxing Association uh, here in Brockton. A lot of, a lot of uh, uh, Brocktonians in, in that group. Uh, we gathered together originally. Uh, the plan was to name the post office after Rocky Marciano, which we did several years ago. But uh, in the same breath and in the same level of respect, uh, all of those boxers, all of those gentlemen uh, had enormous respect for Marvin Hagler. And they followed his career after he left for Italy. He was a, a bit of a movie star over there in, uh, in Italy. And uh, uh, they were just happy for his success. So uh, very, very sad to lose him. And also to all the families uh, and, and and friends we have lost uh, over this last year. Uh, while we seem to be at a, at a, at a better place right now, we're, we're making progress with uh, the vaccinations. It's still important, as the mayor has said, to acknowledge our loss. Uh, and, and just, you know, this was a tough time to lose anyone, you know, to lose a family member or a loved one or a friend uh, when we weren't able to offer someone a warm embrace or a, a supporting handshake or to attend a wake and funeral. Uh, but now we're, we're approaching that moment when we can do memorials and, and uh, you know, especially the veterans. Uh, to lose veterans uh, from World War II uh, under circumstances in which we could not honor their, 
their service and their life's work in ways that reflected the esteem and the love in which we held them, uh, especially with having the Brockton VA here and, and uh, taking care of so many of our loved ones. Uh, just want to acknowledge the loss that we've, we've sustained over the last year, but also there's a, there's a measure of hope ahead for us, immediately ahead. And, uh, you know, the $35 million is, is just uh, one, one part of it, but the work that will be done on behalf of the city of Brockton by all the people who have been recognized, you know, Sue Joss uh, down at Brockton Neighborhood Health Center and, and Father Bills and, and uh, Brockton Hospital and Good Sam Hospital, uh, that's really where the, the rubber meets the road. We have a wonderful delegation uh, here in Brockton, uh, our state representatives, and we, we will need uh, Leader Cronin's help uh, because a lot of the money that's, uh, that's coming to Brockton and that will come to Brockton, we're, we're also doing a, uh, we're doing a big transportation bill. A lot of that is, uh, they call it 80-20 money or 90-10 money, which means uh, the federal government provides 90% or 80%, but then the state or the city has to come up with the remaining 10 or 20. So we will rely heavily on our, our magnificent uh, uh, state house delegation here, uh, Jerry and uh, Michelle and, 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 and uh, uh, Claire Cronin, as well as uh, Mike Brady, our senator, uh, will rely heavily on them, heavily on them in, in the, uh, the bills to come. So this, what we tried to do in Congress with the, with the American Rescue Act is to really look at every aspect of our society that has suffered uh, during this, this pandemic. And some, some areas have suffered uh, more than others, but we, we tried to address it uh, in the same uh, scope and in the same dimension that, that we, we sustained that, that injury, so to speak. So uh, obviously we want to get Brockton back to work, uh, Brockton back into business, and so uh, we looked at everything from transportation to schools to health care uh, to daycare. There are enormous funds here, uh, billions of dollars dedicated to daycare because in order to get parents back to work, kids back to school, uh, we, we need all that to, to happen at the same time. So uh, we've provided $350 billion for cities, states, towns, uh, counties and tribal governments. So what you're seeing here uh, for, for this payment to the city of Brockton, which will arrive, I think, within, within the next 60 days, we, we're working through Treasury. Thank you. Uh, we're, work, we're working through the United States Treasury Department to, to, to hand out the money. Uh, we're using the state, but it's, it's not discretionary on the part of the state. It's, it's earmarked for the city of Brockton. So. It's, it's direct funding for Brockton. But uh, we, we also realize we got to get the schools uh, open. We got kid, to get kids back in uh, in in-person learning uh, when they are ready. Do it safely uh, by first making sure we we amp up the vaccination process. So we've provided about 130 billion dollars uh, to help. Uh, with the development and also the delivery of, of uh, vaccines. Uh, I would say about a month ago, we were getting about 108,000 doses per week, which was not nearly enough for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And, and I want to give credit to the governor because I know he's taken some heat, but, but some of the limitations that he had to deal with were limitations that we had in producing enough vaccine for him to, to deliver. So uh, thankfully, after the Biden administration took office, uh, we've been able to ramp up the production of the vaccines. So we went from 108,000 doses uh, for Massachusetts about a month ago uh, to currently we're about 165,000 uh, doses a week uh, in Massachusetts right now. As a matter of fact, on Thursday, we expect that we will break the 1 million person mark in Massachusetts. So we'll have over a million people vaccinated within the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So that's, that's great progress. It's not where we need to be, but it's, it's closer to where 
we need to be. So we're enormously happy about that. Uh, as you well know, uh, they just approved the J&J, &J, Johnson & Johnson uh, vaccine, which is a one-shot deal. Uh, they, they just got the emergency use authorization. Uh, so they had 4 million doses, which is not a lot for the country, uh, available on day one, but they expect to ramp up to about 20 million doses by the end of this month. So we're very, very excited about that. Uh, also in this bill, we've, uh, we've provided about $8 billion for the VA. Uh, part of that uh, allocation, obviously, is to deal with the vaccine process. They've got, a, uh, you know, they've, they've got several clinics set up. But also, uh, that part of that $8 billion will be to pay for the copay. So if our veterans are signed up for, vet for VA care, sometimes there's a, there's a small copay, a 7% copay on the part of the veteran. So part of that money will go to prepay on behalf of the veterans their, uh, their, their co-payments so that they don't have any out-of-pocket expenses for any of the services that they, they, re they receive uh, during the pandemic. Uh, like I said, there was $130 billion for, for uh, schools. Uh, there's, I, I'm trying to remember, I think it's like $9 billion for uh, higher education. So uh, places like Bridgewater State University and others will receive uh, the benefit of that. There's also $3 billion for parochial schools, parochial and private schools, uh, which have tried to continue to operate, but uh, in many cases don't have the, a lot of the parochial schools are older buildings and they don't have the ventilation systems uh, that, that uh, can guarantee, uh, you know, the ability to filter out uh, coronavirus uh, uh, contamination. So many of those schools will have to have uh, extensive work done on done on their uh, their HVAC system. So the money uh, is avail available for that as well. Um, trying to think, there there's so much in this bill. Um, also, we recognize the the transportation needs. So there's there's about uh, we provided almost a billion dollars to the MBTA, uh, and, and of course the MBTA uh, also administers the contract for the commuter rail. Uh, we're having a little bit of a difference of opinion with the MBTA right now. They seem, they seem, insisting, uh, seem to be insisting on layoffs, uh, furloughs. Uh, there are about 40 conductors that are facing furlough uh, at the commuter rail. I met with them last week at South Station, their representatives, and uh, we're trying to reverse that decision on the part of Keolis to, to furlough, basically lay off temporarily uh, 40 of their conductors. Uh, again, we've, we've uh, provided, like I say, almost a billion dollars to the MBTA, and they have announced recently uh, curtailing uh, a number of, of bus lines, I think about 40 different bus lines. So uh, to be honest with you, that doesn't really work for us uh, as, as a congressional delegation, as a state delegation, uh, or, or for the mayor either. Uh, we think that if we're, we're taking money from the taxpayer and we're giving it to the MBTA, uh, they should be providing services for the taxpayer instead of cutting services for the taxpayer or laying, laying workers off. So I think we're gonna have a, a sit down with uh, General Manager Poftak and uh, the governor's people on this, hopefully uh, Secretary of Transportation uh, Pollock, and try to reverse those decisions on layoffs and curtailment. Think about this. The whole idea be behind the $1.9 trillion is to really help America heal and help America get back to work and help Brockton get back, back to work and back to business. If, if we're trying to encourage people uh, to, to go back to school, go back to work, uh, to, to, to restart their lives, you can't be shutting down the transportation system at the same time that you're, you're doing that. So we feel that the layoffs and the cuts in services are moving in the wrong direction. And we really would like to be on the same page uh, both the federal delegation, the state delegation, and the MBTA to make sure we're, we're moving in the right direction and, and helping 
Brockton and every other city and town in Massachusetts begin to reopen, begin to restart our economy. That's, that's, that's our hope. And uh, we think if, if reasonable minds can sit down and discuss that, I think there's a way forward for all of us. Um, let's see. I know that uh, there's, there's, uh, there's billions of dollars in the, in the uh, American Rescue Plan for hospitals, and we appreciate the work that they have done. Uh, we've put, and, and just so you know, uh, while much of the money is based on population, uh, so larger cities get more money than smaller cities and towns, uh, we also broke out part of this because the pandemic has not been uh, an equal burden for everyone. And Brockton, as you know, was the second highest level of, of infections and hospitalizations as a result of the coronavirus and had an exceedingly high number of, of fatalities because of the level of infection. So what we did in the uh, American Rescue Act was we broke out separate uh, reserve funds for those areas that were most heavily impacted. So that is reflected as well in, in what, what Brockton is receiving and will receive. So we, we recognize that uh, communities of color, in many cases, uh, had a greater uh, uh, burden than, than other communities, and we recognize that. Uh, we, we also provided, uh, so we also looked at the business community, small businesses. Uh, we realized that the failure rate among minority-owned and women businesses was far greater across the country than for, for uh, non-minority, non-women uh, businesses. And so we have a, a separate breakout, a separate uh, revitalization, revitalization fund for those smaller and uh, minority and women-owned businesses. Uh, we also recognize that restaurants were, were exceedingly uh, impacted because of the uh, limitations that we put on those restaurants from continuing operation. So there's actually $28.6 billion that we set, up, set aside in a uh, restaurant revitalization fund. So that will be targeted to smaller restaurants uh, and medium-sized restaurants, but recognizing the burden that they have carried, and in many cases, they had to cease operations. We've lost over 250,000 small businesses across America since a year ago when this, when this pandemic uh, occurred. So uh, we are, and, and we know how important those small businesses are to America. So uh, it takes a lot of courage to put yourself out there and start a business. And so we think that this is one of those moments where, where government has a responsibility to step up. And uh, we, we think that we've done that in this bill. So uh, I know, it, it's such a big bill, I would be here all day describing everything that we've done, but uh, I am enormously happy with the, with the progress that we've made, uh, and I open it up for questions for myself or for uh, our senators, our state reps, or for, for, for Mayor Sullivan as well, but uh, very proud to be uh, the United States Congressman for the city of Brockton, and uh, I recognize my responsibilities. Thank you. So I know we have a number of the press here. Anybody got any questions? Okay. Let me, let me just fill in then uh, with some of the, the I didn't talk about some of the individual impacts. So uh, we did extend unemployment benefits. So right now, most of the states have run out. Uh, they've obviously, after a year of high unemployment, uh, most of the uh, funds have been depleted for, for the state. They've even, uh, thank God for our state delegation, uh, Mike Brady and our state representatives, uh, they've, and, and the governor, dipping into the rainy day fund. Uh, that's what it's for. We really appreciate their, their great work. But we've extended unemployment benefits out till September 6th, so it'll get us through Labor Day. Uh, in addition to the uh, standard statutory benefit, 
Uh, there's also an extra $300 for people who are on unemployment. So, so that's, that's, that's a good thing. Uh, there's also a $1,400 uh, stimulus check that will go out uh, to everyone. I think the cutoff is $80,000 per individual, but $150,000 per uh, couple filing jointly. So those will continue as well. Um, there's an, uh, a child tax credit that uh, has been doubled. Uh, it is now for children six years old and under, it'll be $3,600. Uh, and for children six years old to 17, it'll be 3,000 per child. So when you think about it, if, if uh, a mom and dad and uh, with, with a couple of kids, they'll get, they'll get $5,600, right, for, for the stimulus. And then uh, the, the, the tax credits for the two kids will be basically, if they're under six years old, it'll be another 7,200. So a pretty good level of support for families that have been struggling. And uh, I'm, I'm sure a welcome uh, level of relief for them as well. So uh, we've, we've tried to address things at the level of individual families, but we've also recognized businesses, hospitals, schools, and uh, you know the full uh, range of, of interests and, and uh, uh, benefits that, that should accrue to any city or town. So uh, if we have no questions, I want to I wanna thank everyone for your attendance here. Uh, again, it's an honor for me to represent the city of Brockton. Uh, God bless you all. And uh, please stay safe. We are, not, we are not through this. In closing, I should say, we are not through this uh, by any means uh, of the imagination. We still need to wear our masks. We still need to socially distance. Uh, we're making progress, but we're not quite there yet. And uh, our ability to hang in there and do the right thing over these next weeks and months will make the difference, make all the difference, so that, as uh, President Biden has uh, said, hopefully by... July 4th, we'll be, we'll be able to have a, a real Independence Day, not only for our country, but also in respect to having a full independence from this, this pandemic. So uh, God bless you all, and please stay safe. Thank you. Oh, wait a minute. Mike. Congressman, I just want to thank you on behalf of the state delegation. You've always been there for us in the city of Champions, and thank you for the district as well represented. And this funding from the federal government is so important for our community, especially for our community. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, everybody stay safe today, okay? Thank you.